Video games can be hard. There are plenty of notable games that tout their difficulty as a badge of honor, and the players who finish these games wear their victories with honor as a result. Difficulties can be variable though, and typically they are. A lot of games that release nowadays come with a few modular difficulties baked in, ranging from easy to hard, but there are some that don't really have a difficulty system, just having the one experience in mind. However, some of these one experience games are so hard that they make you want to stop playing the game. And that's odd, right? Why would someone create a piece of media that seems like it actively wants you to stop engaging with it? That's when we start getting into the realm of artistic intent. Intent is, in my opinion, much more interesting when it comes to games than it is with other forms of media, and that's due to how games are a lot more interactive. The intended experience of a video game is beholden to how the player interacts with whatever you've crafted, and that has a lot to do with the difficulty of a game. Intrinsically, difficulty and the intent of the author are linked, and it isn't easy to separate one from another. Developers know this, and it's why when you're choosing a difficulty in some games, there'll be a description next to one of them that says, this is the intended experience of this game. So what happens when the difficulty makes something inaccessible to some players? What is the balance between the developer's vision and its corresponding difficulty, and making sure that a game is playable to everyone? Difficulty isn't something that's set in stone, and that's because there isn't just one type of game. For example, the Uncharted games have a difficulty choice at the beginning of all of their games, and I personally like playing them on hard. The difficulty setting in a game like this, an action-adventure, may increase or decrease the player's health or the damage enemies deal, increase or decrease the damage the player deals, or even in the case of the Batman Arkham games, may even change the enemy AI to be more intelligent or vigilant of what your character can do. I think these settings are pretty reasonable and it allows for other people to play games if they're not as good at them. Me and my sister both love the Uncharted games, The Last of Us, and the Batman games, and we both had the same experience, coming out of those loving the characters, the dialogue, the stories, but we played the game on different difficulties, her on easy, me on hard. Typically, games with these variable difficulties aren't really compromising the general experience by allowing a player to breeze through certain things. However, I do think some things are lost. Take the Batman games. They're obviously kinda easy if you play them on easy mode, but in making it so easy, you could be losing some of the cool interactions like the goons discovering how Batman is hiding and going around to destroy all the vantage points, or enemies trying to burn Batman out of the vents. Things like that. It really makes you feel like Batman. When you put a player in a stressful situation like that one, they're forced to think on their feet with the tools you've given them, and it helps foster that creativity and cleverness that Batman is known for, which is one of my favorite things about those games. Suddenly, the guys with guns can have armor, and you can't take them out silently. What's a gadget that you could use to exploit a new weakness that they have, or maybe a vulnerability that wasn't covered up? Your super x-ray vision that can see through walls doesn't work right now? Pay attention to where everyone is going, or lure enemies away from one another to take them out safely. These moments are admittedly really small in comparison to huge boss fights or cool story beats, but they add up. I feel like playing on an easier difficulty doesn't foster that same sense of pressure. On the flip side, the reason that I or my sister even like those games at all is because we were able to play them on easy mode as kids. Sure, I slowly graduated to harder difficulties pushing to what the game really had to offer, but without lower difficulties I might not have experienced the cooler interactions in the higher ones. But this only really applies to games with those difficulty options. Games without them work in a similar way with difficulty curves and whatnot, but you know that broadly, most people are having the same experience. This, I feel, helps preserve artistic intent a little bit more rather than just making the game arbitrarily easier or harder based on the player's choice. The game is what the developers wanted it to be. Everyone plays the same version of Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Odyssey, Katamari, Sonic Mania, etc. It helps preserve a vision of what the people who made the game wanted you to experience. However, this approach to difficulty comes with a major caveat, one that could possibly sour the reputation of a game, or even make it unplayable to some. Accessibility.
Accessibility is an important factor in all video games. Everyone should be able to enjoy video games, no matter what. And with our advancements in hardware and software, games are more accessible than they've ever been. So many cool controllers have come out for the physically disabled, and AAA games like The Last of Us Part II shipped with 60 accessibility options to choose from, making sure that a large number of people would be able to enjoy the game. This is fantastic, because it's separate from difficulty. You can still choose hard mode and turn on accessibility features to make it playable with visual, audio, or other impairments. With that in mind, there are some games that have trouble with this, and it's not because their developers aren't trying. One of my favorite games of all time, Celeste, is an amazing experience, and its challenging levels reflect the struggle of the main character perfectly. As you progress through the game, Madeline works through her anxieties and self-doubt, culminating in a fantastic race to the summit, where the game suddenly slows down and takes a moment to revel in the achievement of Madeline and the achievement of the player. Celeste's story is heavily linked to its difficulty. I wholeheartedly believe that the game being so difficult makes it hit that much harder. You get to take part in Madeline's struggles, getting frustrated at certain rooms, taking a break to collect yourself, and eventually making it to the end, which has music that is much calmer than the rest of the game, and a beautiful sight with no mountain left to climb. Of course, because this game has so much precision platforming and fast-paced actions, and the developers are good people that care about others, there are accessibility options. The assist mode is a toggleable mode that lowers the stakes of the game by allowing for unlimited dashes, slowing down time, invincibility, the works. This is a good thing, as more people get to experience one of the best indie games ever made, and from the words of the developers themselves, Celeste is intended to be a challenging and rewarding experience. If the default game proves inaccessible to you, we hope that you can still find that experience with assist mode. So maybe while you won't get the intended experience, you can still glean something of your own out of the game, which I think is overall a good thing. The toggleable assist modes are a great solution, and they keep a game's vision intact while also allowing people, who may be physically unable to get past the difficulty spike they're stuck on, to play the game and enjoy it, with no shame or repercussions. By making it toggleable, you can turn it on at a certain point and turn it on afterwards when you're done. The more people that can enjoy video games, the better. I think the only game I've seen this done wrong as hell would be Sonic Frontiers. For people who don't know, virtually every facet of Sonic's movement is able to be changed by the player. The best way to play the game is locked behind sliders and menu options like Jump Deceleration. You mean I have to go into the settings menu to turn down a slider with a hundred different settings to make Sonic keep momentum in the air, even though that's how momentum and speed literally works. Who is the fucking nine-year-old playing this as their first Sonic game who would know to fiddle with the steering sensitivity and goddamn jump deceleration? What were you thinking, Sega? There's no clear vision on how the game is meant to be played here. It's baffling to me. They even added the spin dash into the game like a year after its release. Jesus Christ! That kind of brings me to the main point I'm trying to make. Developers have clear visions for the games as they pan out, at least most of the time, and have one or more intended routes that are meant to be experienced. And difficulty is a necessary and ironically, difficult part of that to implement. If you make your difficulty part of the draw of the game, like the Souls games, you risk alienating people who would have otherwise enjoyed your game. If you give the player too much freedom in choosing their own experience, mechanically that is, games that are open-ended like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are incredible, you risk confusion and frustration like Sonic Frontiers. You have no idea how many people I saw complaining about how the Final Horizons platforming is terrible, with quote tweets of people giving exact settings builds on how to make it bearable. Absolutely unreal. It's up to the developers to give a clear and distinct vision to their games, but it's also up to them to make sure that we aren't leaving people out. Accessibility is just as important as difficulty, and although it's a difficult balance to strike, it can be done without taking away from the artistic intent of the developers. But actually, get good or whatever. <laughs>